OnePlus just announced two new flagships for the year. One is the OnePlus 8, and the other is the more higher-end OnePlus 8 Pro. Hey everybody, it's Lynn from CNET. I hope you guys are all staying safe and well out there. I know spending time inside could kind of make the days all blend in together. Definitely that's the case for me. So to break a little bit of the monotony, there is some phone news coming out of the industry and that is OnePlus. Now what's interesting about these phones is that both are 5G and for the first time ever in the US, OnePlus 8 will be available through Verizon. And it's also going to be sold through T-Mobile. And of course, you could still get both unlocked from OnePlus and at Amazon. Let's go over the main differences between the two phones. The OnePlus 8 Pro, like I said before, is a more expensive higher-end one. It has a 120 hertz display, while the OnePlus 8 has a 90 hertz display. The OnePlus 8 Pro also has wireless charging and reverse wireless charging, so it could charge other accessories. The OnePlus 8 does not. Both phones have a standard and wide angle camera, but the OnePlus 8 Pro has four cameras altogether, including a telephoto and special color filter camera. The OnePlus 8 has neither, but it does have a third macro camera. Lastly, the OnePlus 8 is a tad thinner and lighter and generally smaller than the 8 Pro. I really do like the design of the OnePlus phones this year. They do kind of remind me of the Galaxy S10. That's probably because of this hole punch camera in the front, in the corner, but in general, it looks really sleek and modern. I like the, the thin bezels and the new colors. And I do like that the cameras are vertically stacked. There is a camera bump. It's bigger on the OnePlus 8 Pro, but it's definitely not as egregious as the one on the Galaxy S20 Ultra for sure. OnePlus 8 Pro's 120 hertz screen is super smooth. I really like the high refresh rate. Scrolling through web pages and my social media feed, everything is bouncy and just liquid smooth. Now, because last year the OnePlus 7 Pro had a 90 hertz screen, just like the OnePlus 8 here, and when I looked at it and compared it to a phone with a 60 hertz display, I could really see the difference. And I thought the case would be the same here, that I could see the difference between the OnePlus 8's 90 hertz display and the 8 Pro's 120 hertz display. But really, side by side, I really couldn't tell a difference. So if you're leaning towards the OnePlus 8, but you're a little worried that you're gonna miss out on the higher refresh rate, I say you don't have to worry about it. Side by side, I really couldn't tell that much of a difference. OnePlus also includes an option to revert the display back to 60 hertz if you wanna save on battery life. Keep in mind that the phones don't always keep their higher refresh rate all the time. There are instances, like when the screen is static, for example, that it will revert to 60 hertz. In addition, the OnePlus 8 Pro is finally rated IP68, so it can be emerged in about three feet of water for at least 30 minutes. The OnePlus 8 isn't though, but it is as protected against water as past models. And last year when I dunked the OnePlus 7 Pro in a fish tank for 30 minutes, it survived no problem. Both phones run Android 10 with Oxygen OS layered on top. I really like OnePlus's approach to the OS. It's really minimalistic. OnePlus did add some minor customization options that I like. You could change the notification icon shapes, for example. There's more opportunities to tweak the colors. And they also expanded on dark theme, which everybody loves, but now it could expand to other apps automatically. Both phones have night mode and reading mode to reduce eye strain, but the OnePlus 8 Pro has an added thing called comfort tone, which automatically changes the tint of the screen depending on the ambient light conditions. For me though, I'd rather just schedule this effect in night mode at specific hours.
Both phones have a 48 megapixel main camera. They take beautiful, sharp, and vibrant shots, especially in outdoor lighting. And Nightscape, their low light camera setting, also works great. As you can see by these photos taken at night, they really brightened up the images that you see here. The OnePlus 8 Pro also has an 8 megapixel telephoto camera, which is useful for taking portrait shots. As you can see here, I didn't take one of a human, but I did take one of this plant, and you could see the nice bokeh effect with the blurry background. The camera also has a 30x digital zoom, but as you can see here, like with other phones, the quality of the photo really degrades after 10x. It also has a color filter camera, which you can use to tweak your colors and your lighting, but personally, I didn't get much use out of it. The OnePlus 8 doesn't have a telephoto camera, but it still can take portrait shots, and it has an additional 2 megapixel macro zoom. Now on its own, it doesn't really work that well, colors are flat and the quality is muddy, so I suggest using just the regular camera if you want to take a photo of something up close and using tap to focus. Both phones have OIS and can capture 4K video. And as you can see here, footage is smooth and steady and objects are in focus. Like other premium Android phones out right now, the OnePlus 8 and 8 Pro have a Snapdragon 865 chipset. And when I ran Geekbench 5 on these phones, the results were comparable to the Galaxy S20 Ultra and the LG V60. When we ran our battery test for continuous video playback on airplane mode, both phones clocked in about 18 and a half to 19 hours. That's an excellent battery life, and we're also going to run streaming video tests, so check back with the written review when those results come in. The OnePlus 8 starts at $699 for the 128 gig capacity, and it comes out April 29th. The OnePlus 8 Pro starts at $899 for 128 gigs, and it comes out on April 22nd. Given the pricing and what I observed this week, the OnePlus 8 phones are getting up there in pricing. It's crazy to think that the OnePlus 8 the starting model is the same price as an iPhone 11. And the 8 Pro, it's still $100 cheaper than its rivals, but it's not as much as it was in years past. I also have to consider that both phones pack a lot of features. In addition to 5G, there's the displays with a higher refresh rate, there's an in-screen fingerprint reader, and the 8 Pro has the wireless charging and reverse wireless charging. Both phones are excellent Android devices, and for me, I really like the OnePlus 8, especially if you're a little bit more cost conscious, is still water resistance-ish, the software is nearly identical, the battery lasts just as long from what I observed, and you're not missing out much on the 90 hertz display. So those are my thoughts so far. Let me know what you think, and if you plan on getting either of those phones, and for more tech videos, check out the rest of CNET's channel. Stay safe, be well, and I'll see you guys next time.